If we do not have hearts that care deeply about others, we do not have God's heart. If we do not have hearts that are interested in helping those in need, we do not have God's heart. If we have hearts that have no sympathy for others, we do not have God's heart. If we do not have God's heart, then we do not abide in him, and we must be pitied as those who are lost. For the Lord has an interest for you, and the Lord has concern for you, and the Lord has deep sympathy for you, and he wants to give you his heart. He gave his life for you. He paid the price of all your sin at Calvary. For you, he died. For you, today, he lives. An everlasting life he still freely gives. And so, ask, and you will receive. <laughs> it's amazing that it seems that simple. But ask. He's not going to force it on you. But ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. And the heart of God you need will be given to you if you believe. It is a promise from God. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You know, many things in life are going to distract us from our walk with Jesus. And they're designed, I think, to draw us away from here, the shiny things. Many competing voices will call us away from the Word of God. The Word will tell you the truth. The world will tell you what you want to hear. That's what makes the world so alluring. God won't tell you what you want to hear. He will tell you what you need to hear because it's good for you. And whatever is good for you will ultimately be good for his kingdom. I should probably turn that around. Whatever is good for his kingdom will ultimately be good for us if we are members of his kingdom. Satan desperately wants to keep people in bondage where they are either ineffective or doing damage to the kingdom. He wants to convince believers that they can do without prayer. They can do without time in God's word. They can do without the fellowship of the believers in the church. He wants to convince people. Some people he'll keep away from God by convincing them that they're superior to the people around them. Satan wants to convince other people that they're just worthless. He'll convince some of us that we're useless to God because of our social status. The world doesn't think anything of me. Why would God? Because <laughs> God knows more than the world. The world didn't create you. God did. But what if I die? What if some infected person's virus makes its way into my lungs and it takes me out? Now, please don't think I'm, again, making light of a serious situation, but for the believer, if I die, I die, and heaven awaits. You know, we're in a no-lose situation here because heaven's better than this. <laughs> we love the God who gives us hope, and we can embrace death for death is better than life. We love life. We understand how precious life is. And I'm not going to give it up easily. I'll fight for my last breath, but I'm not going to fear it when it comes. How can I believe these things? Because my God is sufficient for these things. We know he gives life. We know our lives are in his hands. We know he numbers our days. We know he has power over death and hell. That's our God. Believe it. God's word is true. Follow him. Trust him. Love him. Become his and join the great triumphal procession through this life and on into the next.